Hi, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap and welcome to the Flexa Planner in a Slipcase project workshop. I'm going to be filming two versions of this workshop. The first version will have the entire project from start to finish and the second version will just pick up where we left off with the trimming and preparation of all the papers just so that you can see how this cool project comes together. Now what's inside this box? Well it's actually the planner and I call it a flexi planner because it's very flexible and it does have an elastic closure and when you open it up you've got all kinds of fun things to work with like graph paper, line paper, a to-do list, and a calendar. It's almost gift giving season and I think this would also make a wonderful gift. Well let's get started. I've divided the instructions into several phases. Phase one will be the trimming phase in which we will cut every single piece of paper we need and place it in our accordion pocket file if you happen to have one of these. If you don't, I recommend that you have a larger horizontal workspace like maybe a big kitchen table or a craft uh, bench and then uh, just maintain four separate piles if you'd like to label them A, B, C, and D that might be really helpful. Once we have all the papers trimmed and scored then we'll assemble everything from pocket A into the planner cover. Everything from pocket B will be the um, inside the planner and everything from pocket C will be the box and slip cover and then the final pocket I'm calling creative expression. So those are the things that you'll be able to use to decorate your project. So this is um, a really well planned, obviously, project perfect for the Flexi Planner name that I've given it. So basically, if you have a copy of these instructions and you followed along and did all of the trimming for all of the pieces of paper that we sorted and gathered and scored and prepared, you'd end up with four piles or four pocket pockets worth of all of this prepared material. And um, the reason I have you do this preparation each time is because it's A, something that you can learn to do quite easily, and B, something you can then replicate very easily and as efficiently as possible. So I'm picking up now with page three under the planner cover assembly, pocket A. So everything out of this first pocket is what was prepared during that. Uh, initial process and this is what's required to make the outside cover of our planner. Uh, let's just talk for a second about the anatomy of a score line. Make sure that the bump of your score is on the inside of your fold and I'm going to go ahead and crease on those bumps. I'm just using my finger to crease it. You could also use a bone folder to solidify that crease. Now in the craft along kit you got a needle tipped glue ac applicator. I also recommended this book binding glue to put into the applicator and that's the material that I use for assembling this project. Mainly I like to use a liquid glue because it gives me a little bit more time to work with it instead of just having the one and done sort of a placement. You see that we formed sort of a spine and then a, a tab. I'm going to glue this piece to the tab. Now the best way to do that is to sit, just flatten the tab. We want to work flat whenever we can. And I'm going to take the glue applicator and just run a nice line of adhesive along the tab. Then if I can even lay this on my work surface, it's going to be most efficient and, and most visible. And I'm going to lay this right along the edge of the tab so I can see everything as I'm working. Make sure it's level, and that's why a wet glue gives me that flexibility to just scoot and wiggle. Make sure your top and bottom is level as well, or in this case, it's a left and right. Okay, so now what we have here is a spine section with what I'm going to call a divider on top of it. Now, with this other piece that I have, we have another tab and a little spine. I want to glue this tab and put it on the other side. Okay, so all I need to do is apply some adhesive to the tab and I'm going to flip the whole thing over so I can see what I'm doing and lay it on top of the green divider or whatever color you have. Again, trying to align everything beautifully. Check my edges, top, bottom, left, right, however you want to reference the orientation of this piece. And that's all there is to it. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could take a corner chomper and if you open the chomper on the half inch setting and insert the corners of the cover into the chomper, you can go ahead and round the four outside corners of your little cover. 
Okay, the next step is to take the spine piece. This is the piece that when we measured it, I wanted the width of the spine to be slightly larger than three quarters of an inch. And that was simply so that it would wrap itself around the spine that we've created here. Anyway, now I have a nice spine created with the spine cover. And if you look at this, the two spines combined here, this is going to cover that perfectly. We're not going to apply any adhesive to the spine itself. We're only going to apply it to the flaps and add them to the book. And remember how I said it's nice to work flat? So I'm going to flatten the front cover here and apply glue to this flap of my spine cover. Just make sure you get the edges so we have good contact here. Okay, so now I can just slip this right on here, fold it around one side of the cover. And again, it's nice to work when things are flat. So I can just adhere this flap to my front cover. Isn't that great? Flip it over. And once again, I can flatten it out and I'll do the same thing. So I can apply my glue to this two inch flap. As I mentioned, I'm not really gonna glue the spine cover to the spine itself, only to the front and back sides. And then just flatten this around and you can see the book cover forming beautifully. Now you have two additional pieces and if I just take my corner chomper, once again on the half inch setting, you can use your bookbinding glue or you can use this handy glue applicator. This is an ATG gun that I, I don't live without. That stands for adhesive transfer gun or ATG. And I can center this within that space on the front and then repeat for the back cover. I apologize if I'm following some of the steps a little out of order. Um, basically, I was letting my, my heart <laughs> dictate my steps. Okay, now we're going to add something really clever here. And I'm using a corner, um, a crocodile. On, and the crocodiles have a smaller and a larger setting. You can just use a regular hole punch for this too. Um, I just use a crocodile because it's what I have handy. And I'm gonna uh, punch two holes into this triple thickness of paper here. And I'm not gonna punch the hole completely into the cover. I'm gonna just go a little past the edge with my tool and cut a half circle from that spot. Boom. And then I'm gonna go right next door just leave a, some space between the first and the second punch and do it again. And then I'm gonna flip this around and repeat. So once again, adding two holes, two half holes basically, in, the, in uh, corresponding spots. Next, find the elastic that does not have the silver barbs at the end that's in your kit. Fold it in half and then cut it in half. Once the elastic is cut in half, fold it in half again and make a loop to just tie the ends together. So this is just a simple knot. Pull it nice and tight. I'm leaving about a one inch tail. You don't want a huge tail. And then repeat for the other piece. Okay, now I can take this piece of elastic and wrap it around the center divider and loop it onto the notch that you made with your uh, punch. So there's notch number one and notch number two. And this is going to be what holds in our dividers and also makes this flexible in that these dividers can then be removed. I just noticed I could also take my, my corner chomper and round the outside corners of my divider. And that should be the last step in completing our cover. Next, take everything out of the second pocket. Again, this was prepared in advance, and I do have a video to help you with all that preparation, so it's not that big of a deal, and that will help you be successful. I'm gonna go ahead and take these large pieces of eight and a half by 11 papers and simply fold them in half on the score line. Once again, being careful to bury the bump of the score line on the inside of the fold. To stick with our theme here, I'm gonna go ahead and round the corners, and I can work 
two thicknesses at a time, no problem, even with this heavier paper, if I use the corner chomper. If you're just using a standard punch, you should probably work one layer at a time, depending on your hand strength. Next, I'm going to get my score pal out again, not so that I can score these pages, but so I can use them as a jig to make a quick work of folding all of these printed inserts in half. So, for example, I'll take two sheets of the insert, place it vertically into my score pal base, and then bring the bottom up and then simply rest the bottom edge along the top edge of the score pal. I can work, again, two sheets at a time, straighten everything up on the square, bring it up, make sure this is level, and then you don't have to worry about your pages and folds being nice and neat and tidy. The jig of the score pal really helps make that happen quickly. So do that for all of the inserted pages. Once the pages are all folded, you can stack them up neatly, and this is really a great time-saving tip. Then you can burnish one side and burnish the other, and that will create a really nice crisp, crisp fold with only one pass. Okay, then, of course, we'll take our corner chomper, and if you wish, you can work in, again, pairs of two, which is basically four layers of text weight paper. Uh, we'll round nicely with the corner chomper. So here we have our sets of inserts and our file folders, basically. So now I need to take the graph paper, take the two sheets that I folded, and then add the other two sheets. So now we have four pages or uh, to make one signature. Four individual pieces folded in half will fit inside one of the folders. So go ahead and sort those, just pairing up the, the like inserts and putting them in the middle of your folders. Then you can probably choose the order that you want to insert these into your book, and we're actually ready to do that. So go back and find the cover that we made earlier. This is so cool. And I want you to take your selected first piece and open it to the center. So again, you've got four sheets of paper here, all the same style. This is going to be my calendar, and you can choose the color or the order. And then I'm going to slide it under the very first piece of elastic that is on the first punched hole in this, what is now going to be considered the front of my book. Then I'll take the next section, I'll open it, slide it under the second piece, and that'll fit right in there. The third section, maybe I'm going to go with this print so I have some contrast from the green divider. And I have one more strap I can slide this into, and that's what makes this flexible. So I can pull these out, I can store an archive of the materials that I've collected, my to-do lists or my graph paper, and permanently store it as an archive in the bottom of this box when the planner is in use, which is kind of a cool thing. Okay, now we have these um, little manila envelopes, and you can just decide where you want them to go. I found the second divider and slid this piece in so that it went both in front and back of it. So it kind of separates it a little bit. Then I went to the second half of my booklet and did the same thing. You can choose if you want which, what you want on what's, whatever side. Maybe I'll go this way. I'm just gonna slide it in there so that it peaks on the other side of my divider, like this. Next I have two larger light green pieces and four smaller red ones. Now the light green and the red fit nicely together. And what we can do is round those right corners on one long edge. I'm calling it right, but there's really no orientation yet here. And I can do that on the second piece, second set as well. What you can do is nest these together and they are designed to fit into the pocket that we created by trimming the, the bottom off of the envelope which creates a pocket. It's really cool. I'm not going to glue them yet because I have a little tip I want to show you on how to make a tab for these little inserts. From Pocket D, I did find this little piece of dark green paper. It measures three and a quarter by four and a half. I'm going to cut this into two, two squares measuring two and a quarter inches each. And then I'm going to See which way the grain direction goes in this paper, and this way, this wants to be folded in half this way, so I'll score it at one and an eighth. And then I'll fold the paper in half by burying the bump of the score line. Then with my corner chomper on the one quarter inch setting, I'm gonna punch into the folded edge. Next, I can open up my little butterfly here. It's gonna become a little tab, and add some book binding glue to the entire surface on the inside. 
After that, I can clip it around the larger piece of paper that we have here so that I have a nice little tab sticking out. You don't want it going out too far. And then I can add my either my glue or my ATG. Totally up to you. Nest, it should nest right on there and it will cover the bottom portion of the tab. If you were going to be using the liquid adhesive, just simply go around the perimeter and then squiggle, squiggle your way through there. And you can repeat this for the second piece. And then that fits right inside the pocket beautifully. And then you have a nice tab to pull out. That concludes everything from pocket B. So now we're going to move on and make the box and slip cover. Take everything out of pocket C. Let's start by identifying the score line along a horizontal edge that is only one inch from the top. So in that case, I can confirm that this narrower score area is only one inch. I'm going to bury the bump of the score line inside my fold and repeat that for all four pieces. If you want, you can burnish the score with a bone folder. And then I want you to take some book binding glue and squiggle it all along the flap that you made on the inside of the flap and fold the flap over onto itself. This green paper has a texture to it, so I'm hoping that um, you, it was scored and folded correctly so that the texture is still gonna be on the outside of this fold. And repeat for not only all of the dark green pieces, but the two orange pieces as well. I'm gonna start with these green pieces. These are slightly smaller than the slip cover, so this is the box piece, and with scissors, I, I actually find it's a little easier to look at this when the score bump of the score is facing up. And I'm going to go ahead and remove a small dart, which basically I'm just removing the line of the score from the bottom edge up into the intersecting horizontal line. So it's just taking, taking out the score. I'm going to do the same on the other side. But this time, instead of just taking the slit, I'm going to remove the entire corner. <laughs> so just rotate and remove it. So now I have a missing corner. This side you need to have a tab, okay? I'm gonna repeat this for the second piece. So again, removing just the score line itself up to the point where I reach the intersecting horizontal score and then take out the entire corner on the left side here. I'm removing that score line as well, keeping it nice and straight though. Okay, so now I'm going to prepare my box shape by folding on all of the score lines once again burying the bump of the score inside the fold next make sure both pieces are horizontal in front of you with the one inch tab at top and i've got my missing corner over here so i'm going to fold over this side wall and i'm going to add some glue to the entire flap just the side wall only and I'm going to take the other piece and turn it over so that the uh, one inch flap is on the inside facing the other one. And I'm going to place this sidewall on top of the other. So this is what's going to start to form that box shape. I hope that made sense. You want the outsides facing out, right? And that one little flap kind of indicates the inside of the box. And just press that down and burnish it firmly. You want that to bond. It, and it's an uneven surface inside, so it may need a little extra TLC. Now flip the project completely over and open the box. Then take this piece and fold it over again. And repeat. So I'm going to apply the glue to the flap of the sidewall. Take the right edge and simply bring it back down, laying it flat. Remember how I mentioned it's nice to work flat? The same is the case here. Now I can see really well, make sure it's a nice uh, flattened piece and form into a rectangle. And now I have what will be the base box of my unit. I have to still deal with these tabs here yet, so let me show you how to do that. I'm going to start out by putting one of the long walls inside and then I'm going to apply glue to the back of these other three walls, the two tabs and then this long wall here. So I'll just apply the glue. Notice I'm working with this kind of facing up. Stabilize from beneath if you need to. Going around the perimeter and then filling in with my squiggles. Okay, so with this flap down, this long wall, I'm gonna bring in my sides. Make sure they're not extending past this edge here. And then bring in the long flap. And just tuck everything in nicely. You'll do it from this side 
and then you go in and do it from the other side. Flip it over. You can reach right down in there and just burnish. And you got yourself a really nice looking box. <laughs> With the orange piece, make sure you have the one inch folded area at the top and look down at the bottom. On my left, I happen to have the smallest square here. It's a rectangle. And then this scored area actually makes a square. So on the square side, I'm just going to go up and remove the score line only just keeping everything else. Don't even really make much of a V, just remove the score line itself. However, on the other side, you're gonna remove the entire score line and the whole corner. So just that, just cut on the other side of the line to remove the smaller rectangle. The, the other side was a square shape and then this is that rectangle. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So on the larger square, just take out the score line only, stopping at the intersecting score. And then on this side, take out the rectangle. So to make the lid now, I'm gonna begin by first preparing all of my scores again, fold, fold inward so that the bumps of the scores are in the inside of the fold and then the flap too should be like on the inside as well. Okay, once again, I'm gonna place my piece that has the smallest sidewall, so that's this one, and with the missing corner. So if yours is on the other side, you need to work from the other side. Um, so just make sure whichever piece doesn't have the rectangle, that's what you have to apply the glue to. So this is just like the other cover, except now we're only applying glue to the small sidewall. Again, flip the whole process around. If, you, if you're small, if you're missing corners over here, you've got to place the glue there. And now this piece that has the tab, the wide flap, gets lined up with the edge of this cover piece here, making sure that the folded over edge is aligned at the top right here. Burnish that a little bit. Then I'm gonna flip the entire project over and open it. Fold over the sidewall. Just work very carefully with this step. This is probably the number one hang up in every class uh, where people struggle. If that happens, you're just gonna have to find some substitute paper from your stash, probably wouldn't be that hard, and a lot of this paper gets covered up anyway, so don't fret it. If it goes south on you, don't worry. Um, just substitute with another sheet of 12 by 12 paper and trim it and score it as indicated in step four. Now I'm making my rectangle like I did before. I'll tuck in one long flap and then the other ones I'm going to fold out so that I can apply glue easily. I'll just come on in and get those tabs and get one long wall. This one. Okay, order of assembly, tuck in the tabs so they can be hidden by the long wall. Just square it up nicely. Make sure those tabs are tucked all the way in. Another advantage of a wet adhesive gives you a little bit of time to adjust. And then just smooth things up from the other side. Okay, now here's where the rubber meets the road. Does the lid fit onto the base? And it does. Okay, so now your whole unit should just go right inside here just fine, and then the lid comes on, and it's looking quite beautiful. Now, what about these other pieces that we came out of this particular pocket? Well, at this point, you can decide how you want your piece. Like, do you want it to live on its side or its top? Is there any particular way you'd like this positioned? Um, I'm going to go this route. So you, again, you can either use your dry adhesive if you don't mind a one and done sort of a placement opportunity. And I'm going to just put a thorough coat on. And if you, um, if you really want good adhesion, I'd recommend going with the liquid glue. It'll give you a little bit more time to fine tune your placement. Now there's almost no reveal on this, which is again, why if this cover doesn't, the assembly doesn't go your way, um, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to flip this over and this time I'll just use my book binding glue. Okay, we have this beautiful strip that we can add to the outside long edge. And you have two more pieces for those outside short walls. Oh, I'm very pleased with how this looks. And again, I can add my lid 
and it looks very, very nice from all sides. Now, you do have the eight inch elastic with barbs and you don't wanna add that until we decorate our cover. So I'm gonna reach into pocket D and grab some of the prints. Now before I add the elastic closure, I wanna just decorate the front cover. Now I've got two strips that are the same that I can use to decorate this and like layer onto it. And the width is already pretty good. Like it's, this is three and a half and this is three and three quarters. So I just need to measure this is eight and a quarter. So I'm gonna just trim these, just these prints at eight inches. Next, I'll take my corner chomper and pay attention to the direction you want these to go. And this can sit beautifully right here, so I'll go ahead and attach. And I'll do the same on the back cover. In order to add the elastic with the barbs at the back cover, I'm gonna flip it over. Just make sure you know the front cover and the back cover. This is the back. I'm gonna measure one inch from the left edge and a half inch up from the bottom, approximately. So a half inch from the bottom and an inch from the left edge. With my grid ruler, I can make easy work of that. So I've got the ruler position half inch and there's my one. I'm gonna make a little mark there. I'm gonna turn this around and do the same thing. Again, a half inch from the bottom edge and one inch from the right edge, the long edge. Now I can take my hole punch and this time I'm only gonna use the, um, the smaller sized hole. And just make sure you have the only the back cover and eye up that little mark you made and just give that a little punch. And again, this is why I waited until the cover was decorated. When you attach the elastic, I want you to bring the barb in through the punched hole all the way and just kind of turn it on its side so it stays in. Do the same for the other side. Now with this attached, I can bring it around to the front cover and it fits perfectly. After that, everything else in pocket D as well as all of the photo mats that came in your kit, the ribbons, the cut aparts, all the charms and embellishments, all of that can be used to decorate your book. It's just gonna be so much fun to embellish it. Let's take a quick look again at my finished sample. I got out my die cutting machine and I cut some cut aparts for the front, nested them onto a piece of a scrap. Did the same thing here. You can see how everything just adapted so beautifully. I'll just page through it so you can see some of the finishing ideas. I always just kind of follow my heart here. I even uh, adapted some photo mats to fit. Added a matted item here. Some uh, paper remnants, some scraps from before, the die cuts. You can even decorate the little inserts as well and decorate each side of those manila folders. Here's a manila envelope here, decorated on both sides. A nested cut apart, border strips to anchor everything down. Even that quarter inch strip I used to line the inside of that divider. Here's my to-do page and the back. Simply beautiful. I had the different cover here. I used this one here, switch things around. Again, it's your own darn book. You can make it however you wish. Now, as I mentioned, you can create the same exact project with other kits and collections from Club Scrap. And I just got started on this one with our new October collection called In Transit. So this one is designed more as a journaling style, as a travel journal. So I think this is gonna be awesome. Like if you go on a European river cruise, you could make your notes and uh, sketches, your, your even your to-dos for your trip or your itinerary. And you can even add memorabilia to the to the envelopes and everything included. This hasn't even been decorated yet, I, but I just love the way that turned out with that beautiful um, train print here. My colleague, Karen, also made one with the Prism collection. So let's say you've got a Disney trip planned. You can uh, take advantage of all these fun, bright colors. You were born to sparkle. Isn't that perfect? So again, her journal, all fully decorated, ready for some adventures and then finally I also made one this might be perfect for your your teen or tween it's just a fun colored book this is made with a collection called little sprouts and um, have big dreams you will grow into them here when you disassemble this you've got all kinds of fun options and another beautiful book inside
I realized that was a pretty substantial project. I hope you had fun watching it all come together and that you're inspired to make one of your own. If you liked this approach, the organized and planned out and carefully mapped out approach to making a complex project much easier by taking it step by step, I invite you to join us at Clubscribe with some sort of a membership. We have a card club and a page club, and we approach the assembly of our layouts and cards the exact same way. So if you typically find yourself spending an hour or more on a single layout, you don't have to do that if you do it the Clubscribe way. I invite you to